here's what I would expect. The thing I want to emphasize is that there's plural. There's AIs. So this idea of the monolithic AI taking over, they're just, they're like machines and they're, they follow the general engineering maxim, which is that you cannot optimize everything. There's always trade-offs. So we're going to engineer these AIs to be good for certain things, but not as good as something else in another dimension. And we already see that with, say, the image generators. Some favor artists, some favor photography. There'll be different personalities. The one that does painting the best probably isn't going to be the best for writing. Mm -hmm. There'll be some kind of transformative They're all you know, equally thing. bad at hands. I've You're noticed. right. And so I say the general stance we're going to have is what I call dumb schmartin. Okay. There'll be really smart and is that pennsylvania dutch well i don't know it's kind of like that it's <laughs> okay. amish it's dumb smart and we're just going to be furious it's like how could you be so dumb when you're so smart about these other things yeah. this is going to be their typical reaction it's like you're insanely brilliant but you're so dumb here sounds like half of silicon valley <laughs> exactly <laughs> dumb smart and it'll be more and more difficult to kind of generalize but what i'm saying is that they're going to be engineered for specific tasks primarily. Mm -hmm. And there will be a general one, but the general one would be kind of like, like the Swiss Army knife. Yeah. You know, it's like good generally, but not really the best in any one tool. Yeah. That's the engineering maxim. So we should expect multiple varieties of these. Mm -hmm. And for me, the best stance is to think of them as artificial aliens. Okay. Aliens mean they could be like Spock or Yoda, very, very smart, but they, they're just doing things differently than we would do. If they have a sense of humor, it'll be a little off. <laughs> but that is actually their benefit. Because they help us think different. And that's what we're going to be using them for. That's what people are already using them for, is generate ideas. Like, there's probably an idea that no human would ever have come up with. And that helps me come up with a new idea. The third thing I would say about the AIs is that most of them will be unseen. They'll be behind the office operating things, the plumbing, the infrastructure. And that's actually a sign of their success. Technologies succeed when we don't see them anymore. We don't think about them. They become boring. And that the majority of the stuff won't even be outward facing. It'll be just behind the scenes. And, and then this idea of consciousness. Consciousness is a liability. You don't want your car to be conscious. You want it to drive. <laughs> you don't want to be worrying about whether it should major in finance. You want it to focus on the road. Uh -huh. So there will be advertising AIs as conscious free. Dumb and obedient. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Extra $30 per month. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. So I would say a couple of things. One is I, I think AI overall is underhyped, but the current version, we won't even call AI in 30 years. We'll look back and that's, that wasn't it. And so it means that there's no AI experts right now. But in the short term, we're probably overestimating this idea of like vast unemployment and stuff, not in the next couple of years for sure. So everything you've said makes sense. Tools will get specialized. They will become so embedded that we will cease to think about them. Hopefully. And hopefully, right? In the same way that you waved at the lights, right. you know, we have all sorts of lights in here, right. but it's not like we walk into any room with artificial light and we think, good Lord, yeah. <laughs> what is this miracle of engineering right, right. and human ingenuity? I think most folks would be like, okay, okay. So right. why is it under hype, right? What, what should surprise people or what, what are people right, right, not right. appreciating? So I was involved with the internet. I was living online for at least 10 years before 1992, 93, when Wired started. And in a certain sense, it was like, we couldn't get anybody to take it seriously. It was dismissed as teenage boy stuff, and it was kind of, that's what it was. But I felt like, no, this is like, this is really significant. This is really powerful. And what changed it was an interface change. It became visual mm -hmm. for the first time. And the web was pictures and stuff. And that's when everybody switched out. It. Most of the AI happening today has been happening with all these chat, has been happening for years. What's new is that we now have an interface. We have the conversational. It's this idea of the large language model. We have a conversational interface. And that suddenly was like, ah, oh, the power that's been there for years is now suddenly accessible. It's like having the pictures on the web. And so we're suddenly 
thinking about it suddenly in people's faces in the same way that the internet was completely fringe. And then when the web came along, it very rapidly became mainstream. I remember the first time I saw my gas station, the pump, there was like a URL. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, it's here. This is, I have the same feeling right now happening with the chatbots and the, and the image generators is these capabilities have been around for at least a decade. But now what's new is we have a, a language interface, a, a conversational interface with them. And the, the power is just sort of completely in our faces now. Mm -hmm. And so where do we go from there? I think we are going to then start to apply this to everything, right? It's going to be, I mean, as we speak every day, there's people embedding this and they're going to embed it with this interface. So I think we're going to move to this, having a whole nother level of interfacing with this machine with language. And that's very, very powerful. We'll just go through the whole thing. It's like, take X, add the language interface to it. That's really powerful.